Hi, I'm Susan Adler, Executive Director of Boston Jewish Film. It's finally here, opening night of the 32nd annual Boston Jewish Film Festival. The Boston Jewish Film team and I are so happy to have you joining us, and we hope that you'll love these films and programs as much as we've loved putting it all together for you. We wouldn't be here tonight and throughout the festival without the determination and the expertise of the unflappable BJF team and the generous support of our sustainers who came to our aid in these difficult times, our individual supporters, our corporate sponsors, and our foundations, and of course, our amazing board of directors who have been with us to provide guidance and support and leadership every step of the way. They really are the best. I'm so pleased to work with and introduce the curator of the Boston Jewish Film Festival, our phenomenal and inspiring artistic director, Ariana cohen halberstam I hope you enjoy the festival. Thank you so much, Susan, for the kind introduction and for all that you do to make this festival possible. It is amazing to be at our opening night of our 32nd annual festival, and it's definitely strange to be here doing this from home instead of at the Coolidge Corner Theater like we've been doing for decades with all of you. But we are so excited about the opportunities that doing this online has allowed us. Be sure to find our calendar of events. You'll see not only amazing films, but inspiring conversations with panelists, um, interactive events, classes like a calligraphy class, um, and music programs like one you'll see tonight. So it's now my pleasure to introduce some of the most incredible guests we have, Academy Award nominated director uh, and cinematographer Todd Lending and musicians, the stars of the film, Saul and Ruby's Holocaust Survivor Band, Saul Dreyer and Ruby Sosnowitz. Welcome, we're so glad to have you here. Um, I'm gonna ask you all to unmute. Okay, we're unmuted. Thank you, Ariana, thank you for inviting us. <clears throat> this is a film that you know speaks so much to what we do as a festival and it, it tells your incredible stories Saul and Ruby um, and you know Todd you did such a beautiful job bringing these these stories to life so I want to start with a question to you how did you meet Saul and Ruby and how did you come to learn their story uh, I actually saw a very short piece on them in the New York Times it was a New York Times op doc it was a three minute piece and uh, I was finishing a project and I was looking for my next project and a friend of mine showed me the, the piece and I was just completely taken by these, by these two men and their story. So um, I'm Jewish. I had never done a Jewish theme film before. All my films over the past 30 years have dealt with all kinds of other issues, poverty, addiction, incarceration, and a lot of focus on the African-American community as well as Hispanic and others, but never a Jewish themed film. So this was, I, I, when I saw them, like I said, I, I fell in love and I thought, wow, this could be something really new for me and something very close to home. So the thing is I thought, um, the guy who made this three minute piece probably is doing a longer piece on them. So I was, I was like, What's there to do? My friend said, no, you don't know, you know, give them a call, pursue it, see. So I did. And uh, by the grace of God, this guy was not doing a longer piece on them. That was the end of the piece. And so I immediately hopped on the phone. I ended up calling Saul. And uh, Saul said that he'd be willing to meet. And the next day, literally, I, I jumped on a plane. It was like, I, I flew from where I live in Chicago down to Florida, <clears throat> met him near where he lives in Adelie, and we sat down and we talked and uh, he, he agreed to, to work with me and I met with Ruby and Ruby agreed as well, and Hannah, and uh, we took off from there. Um, and I, I didn't introduce Hannah, who um, is Ruby's daughter, who's here as well. So thank you for being here as well. Um, if you've seen the films already, and I know many of you will be watching it after tonight, um, but Hannah also is in the film and, and you'll get to know everyone here um, much better through the film. Um, 
And of mind. course, the, the short film, the Opdoc, um was by <clears throat> Josh Weinstein, who um, went on to direct Menasha, another Jewish theme film, which we've shown at the festival. Um, so I wanted to ask that, you know, one of the things that I think is really special about the film is this arc when you go to Poland. Did you have any idea when you were starting the band that this is where it would take you? No, it was a, a, it was a funny thing. I tell you exactly how it happened. I, I walked up one morning and I saw a, a article about a lady by name Somers, a Holocaust survivor, that she, she uh, survived the Theresienstadt concentration camp. And she was playing piano and she passed away. And she was 100 years old and was early in the morning. I said, oh my God, I would love to do something about it. And I came with the idea, I'm going to try to put together a Holocaust survivor band. I wake up my wife and I told her, she says, you're crazy. <laughs> At the same week, I went to the synagogue to services. I, I'm sitting having a, a lunch with the, with the rabbi. I told him the same story. He says, oh, you're so old. You're the time. What do you need it for? You're crazy. The boy told me crazy. Monday morning, I was in the car. I was buying a brand new set of drums. <laughs> and you had never played the drums before. And eventually, I was looking for somebody to start uh, the band. Uh, so somebody recommended to me that somebody is in Delray Beach and, uh, and I should talk to him. I called him up. It happened on a Friday and Hannah was home. I took my gears, boom, I'm there. We made a deal. And uh, the, Ruby, first break, uh, the first break we had, Ruby, Hannah and me, we had the first break with Dudu mm -hmm. Fisher, Legas. We play a concert, uh, we were his anchor, he, without, without rehearsal, without anything, and we had a standing ovation. Wow. Well, that's how it started. But it started before a lady, a lady by name Cecilia Margulis, they discovered us in a synagogue and a, a Sukkot, you know Sukkot? And mm -hmm. what happened, we were playing, we were rain up. So we had to run to a room. And as she walks through, she said, do you have a car? I said, yes, you can hear from me. But that's great. Uh, for five years, Ruby she called us up. She, we said uh, they were on the plane. Hannah, Ruby, and me to Las Vegas. Wow. And, that's how we and after this, uh, the the sky opened. Am amazing! So many people retired to Las Vegas, and to I was have retired, your career I start was, there. It was not, it, it was <laughs> 2014. I didn't do nothing. I was I was going crazy. So to me, this was something yeah. out of this world, and I didn't touch yeah, the drugs for amazing. 67 years. Wow, wow! And Ruby, you you were a musician. You had taught music classes um, in Brooklyn, you know, and and we we know through the film that that you had a, a longer career as a as a musician. What were your thoughts when Saul, who everyone was calling crazy, came to you and said, let's start a band? Yeah. When Saul called you, what, what was your thoughts? Hi, Todd. Hi. What happened? I don't know. OK, go, Ruby. Go. I don't know what's going on. So the question is, what was your thoughts when Saul called you to set up, make a band like this? Uh, when Saul called me, I was uh, I wasn't ready because my I had a, a wife who is sick, and uh, I went out of the music complete because usually I that's my I always play music, and it was very nice. Uh, I enjoyed when he called me that I'm going to start a new band. And that's what. The, the, uh, we were, I mentioned before the scenes in Poland and um, I know you had not been back to Poland before. Uh, Ruby, Saul, had you been back before I you went with the band? Poland. Before I went with, with the orchestra, I went uh, to Poland, I was there twice. Once I was with my with my wife, my whole family, and second times I flew with my son. He was at that time working for the U.S. Airways as a pilot, and uh, and and we 
we flew to China with him and from there went to Poland. We stayed there a few days and we went back home. And then and we went to Poland. Then we went to Poland, of course, Ruby again, Hannah, me, and our guitar man, I'm sure. Yes, and our collect, Ruby. Yeah. And our guitar yes. man. Four people went, went to Poland and we played. Uh, we were Auschwitz and we were in Warsaw. In Warsaw, we had a concert, a combination, two orchestra, a Polish orchestra, and a, and a the most popular in, in Poland. Uh, with us, and we play for our audience outside of 3,700 people. The police was in the back directing the traffic was unbelievable. I mean, this was this happened once in a lifetime. It was that was an incredible. I, I, you called him the Bono of of Poland. I, I don't know if that uh, right. <laughs> was a, a ter term given in the film, or if that's how he calls what he calls himself, but. Um, you got the sense of how, how incredible it was to be playing with him there. Um, I mean, we see the scenes of you guys going back and Ruby of you going and, and nothing looked the same as, as it had when you when you left, of course, because Warsaw had been bombed. Um, what was the experience like? Were you what were you expecting and, and how did your expectations change being back there? When you went back to Poland, then everything was destroyed. How did it feel? Oh yeah, uh, it was very uh, bad feeling for me. But I was very happy to see that I came back to the uh, to Poland and, and play music. Yeah, I mean for 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 us, it, and I know Dad has mentioned this to me too, that it it felt so weird for him to go back to Poland, especially to Warsaw, where at the time when he was a little boy, he's running for his life to be alive. And now he's gone back all these years later, that, walking right. the streets as a free Jewish person and being on a stage and now a stage, yeah, in front of Polish born people yeah. as a free Jewish person and playing songs of that time. It was historical I, I for our family. I didn't believe that's gonna happen. <laughs> It's historical. Yeah. It really yeah. is historical. Thank you. It's really moving. <laughs> Thank you. Saul, you, I, we, we saw you go back to, oh, sorry, Ruby. Repeat the question. Uh, 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 oh, when, when we see you go back to Krakow, you know, at first you, there's, you know, and, and Todd really captures all this energy that you have. And, and then we see you come back to the home well, that you grew I up was in. in Krakow. Tw three uh, twice, and then I went to Krakow with with the orchestra. It happened. I showed them our uh, my quarters with apartment, and I got I got chills. And Hannah says, "Sal, what happened?" I says, "I can't go up." I says, "I can't go up," and I never went inside. They were both with me, Hannah and Ruby. Were, uh, you know, uh, in the street the way I, I was born, I was living. And it was to me, it wasn't a big surprise because I was twice there before. But then being, you know, with the Holocaust survivor, a friend of mine, like Ruby, be there, you know, it was, a bit, I felt more secure, not only secure, but for, I felt more better, you know, that I can show something from my youth. And yeah, I mean, but but in the end, it's it's such an emotional shift that we see. And and Hannah, I know you wanted to go up into Saul's apartment, and um, and his children did too. Did you end up? Did you end up getting to see the where Saul grew up? Uh, no, we wanted mm -hmm. to, but Saul, I guess he got very emotional. Maybe uh, there were so many things that probably was coming back to him from his childhood, and. Uh, he just couldn't go up and I wanted so much for him to knock on the door. Of course, other people living there, maybe show us inside his room and things of that nature. Yeah, but, but he was at least able sure. to show us outside of the building and he pointed to the window where, where they lived. But it was just incredible to be able to go there because you know, with my father, I wanted to experience those moments too, but my, unfortunately, my unfortunately, Warsaw was completely destroyed. So we went searching for addresses and apparently even the address that he was at right. didn't even exist. They didn't find the so where I used it, to live. it was hard. 
but we were lucky. We were able to walk the streets of Poland and they had all these renditions of what it was like pre-war. So mm -hmm. that got to at least take a look and That's right. kind of, you know, be a little bit but more I didn't, happy. I didn't find a place where I used to live, no. Yeah. But it was wonderful being there with him. Yeah, with that's him. right. Todd, did you know did you know that this trip to Poland was in the works when you started filming? Was this uh, the plan to sort of structure the film around it or? No, no, there was no plan. <laughs> the plan, <laughs> the plan was was to really follow their trajectory. And um, for me personally, that's the joy that I take in documentary filmmaking. I actually like being out of control. I like following a story, following characters that, you know, have a drive. And you don't know. You don't know what the story is going to be. So I ended up shooting uh, at least 250 hours worth of footage, wow. cutting that down to 80 minutes you're looking at you're looking at basically one percent, less than one percent of the footage. That's the price you pay when you do this type of film. You follow people. You know, in this case, it was two and a half years I was following them, and you don't know where it's going to go. But there there were elements, there were aspects to their story that I knew up front that were fascinating to me. Their own backstories their history, what they were now taking on, this idea of taking on this band, who know, you know, would it be a success? Would it be a flop? Would it disappear? But I knew they, there was this feeling of wanting to go back to Poland. So I knew this was a possibility, but the wives were alive when I first started filming. The wives were also ill. So I knew that there's the possibility we may go through the loss of their, of their wives, which is what did happen. So you see elements that you know could make an interesting story. You don't know what'll happen. So yeah, and, and a lot happens in the film. Um, yes, you did. You talked about it in the you know in the film Saul and Ruby. Both of you lose your wives, who were very long time. You know, were your partners since you were very very young. Um, and I'm curious, sort of what that time was like with the band. Um, if, you know, you talk about music getting you through hard times, did having the band in your life um, affect the way you processed and sort of were able to deal with this grief? And I guess I'll extend the question because we're in a very difficult time now and I'm wondering what you're doing with music these days. Uh, I can let Ruby, if you want to start and then Saul, you can answer. I'll, I'll talk a little okay. bit. Dad has a hard time hearing. Um, okay. You know, yeah. it was a very difficult time. My, my mom was severely ill. She had suffered numerous strokes that was constantly debilitating her. Right. So when this band came around, it was very hard trying to juggle how are we going to do it? But it turned out to be very therapeutic for my father, Saul, and myself because we were able to meet other people, play music, come together, reinvent ourselves. And like my father always says, music is therapy. And it actually gave us a few hours of, right. of feeling good. That's right. And in a bad situation. So, Saul, I just want to thank you for that, you know, um, concept of this band because I really believe it really helped all of us get through a very, very tough, tough time. That's right. It was very, very hard on all of us to, and <clears throat> and believe me, we were felt guilty leaving for a few hours here and there, and God forbid something happened and whatnot. But with the grace of God, we made everything work. And my mother was so happy about it. She constantly said, you go, don't worry, I'll be okay. And she loved my father so much. And she yeah. knew he had stopped playing music for a long time when my mom got sick because he was such a devoted, doting husband, just an amazing man. That's right. And uh, you, but... it was just, we, we made it work. And, and it was just beautiful. It was beautiful to be on stage 
and see people happy and people coming up and smiling and crying and mm -hmm. just being so happy to meet these two two amazing men. It was wonderful. Yeah, we were doing we were doing several things at one time. We were dancing, playing music, crying and laughing at the same time with three thousand seven hundred people. This was unbelievable. Yeah. And making a movie. <laughs> um, I, was, I, I, was, I was, we all were so happy that you can imagine. When we came to the, to the hotel, I believe I didn't sleep at all night. <laughs> Started at daylight and we finished late, late at night. Maybe probably, and when was that? But three to four hours, I don't even be, remember. Wow, wow. <laughs> Uh, and one thing, you know what we did? Uh, this I have to tell you. You know how we take, tell the people thank you? How? Again, never again, never again. Remember, Ruby? <laughs> you know, one thing I want to say is very something? powerful. Yes. But it's very Ariana, powerful. Wanna, I'm gonna just, I just want to say for people in the audience who want to start asking questions, there's mm -hmm. the chat, oh, and we're going to start mm -hmm. taking audience questions in a minute. Okay. Go ahead. Uh, we just got a comment that this is such a beautiful conversation. So uh, they're they're coming in. Um, Hannah, go ahead. You know, I, I just want to say that uh, one thing this whole thing has has taught me is that no matter where you are in your life, no matter what's going on, what your age is, there's always something phenomenal that can still happen. A wonderful chapter can open up in your life and bring things to you that you never ever would have contemplated what that would happen. And to have these two gentlemen at this age to, ha to be on Zoom now with this beautiful Jewish film festival with your beautiful audience watching and asking questions is really a dream come true. And we thank you and Todd, we of course, thank we thank you Todd, too. Right, Todd was very nice. That is, very I mean, welcome. it is. <laughs> It, it is a really beautiful part of the film and it's such a, I mean, and the life beyond the film, beyond the filming, I think is another really beautiful aspect of it. And I did want to ask you, Todd, you mentioned some of the work you did earlier and, and the films you've made before, which are on, in some ways very different topics. Um, and I'm wondering how you sort of think about this in terms of the other films that you've made and how this fits in with the social justice themed movies that you've, that you've worked on in the past. Well, I think, I think this film um, it does have a connection to my films of the past, even though this is a, a Jewish themed film. And as I said earlier, I had not done a Jewish themed film before, but there are elements of this story. Certainly the whole issue of dealing with anti-Semitism, which is so much a part of who these men are and what they had been through. Um, you know, that there's a connection between that and a lot of the African American stories I had told and, you know, the experiences they've had with persecution. So, I mean, there's a bridge there, there's a connection. Um, dealing with the elements of loss, uh, in this case, loss of wives, but in almost sadly, in a lot of my longer films, I had other situations of loss where people were killed during the filming. Um, in one of my films, the one that was Oscar, uh, nominated for an Oscar legacy, the first, the day I started filming, their son, who was to be the major subject of the film, was shot and killed mm. just on the day I started filming. So I followed that family through their loss, loss and grief. So loss, grief, um, racism, persecution. I mean, these are all these are all connected. To, to the stories I told, but this film for me is extremely special and unique because of the way it, as I said earlier, the way it connects to my own history. I, I have, I don't have um, Holocaust survivors that are in my immediate family, but there are through the lendings and through the Bernheim, through my mom's side and my dad's side, there are distant relatives um, that were lost. And of course my, my grandpa Lending came right from Warsaw and uh, he came here at, at the age of, of 12 and his father, my great grandfather, they came here because he had 
killed a policeman who was beating up a Jew. He got involved in a, in a fight. And, and uh, it was that action that then brought the family here. So again, you know, there's, there's just a very deep connection to these men and spending time. I've never spent this kind of time with Holocaust survivors. And I got to spend a lot of time with these two men and it was the greatest gift. I mean, it was, um, they just opened up a whole other world to me and, and connection to my, to my own Jewishness. So I, I, I thank them for, for so many lessons I learned with them. Yeah, I mean, it's clear that, that you're, even in your filmmaking, I think it's clear that you're close to both Saul and Ruby. And I think we see their friendship also in the in the film, which is lovely. I mean, there's a scene where you're eating soup together and it's, <laughs> it's, it seems like your family and it's really um, nice to see those connections made um, through music. Um, and mm. I wanted to ask a question from the audience. Um, this is a question from Leslie Rosenberg. She says, you guys are phenomenal. Is there a way I can get a recording like a CD of your music? Yes. I would love that. Yes. Yes. How? How does one, Tell them how does how. one do that? Well. Uh, um, if you uh, email me at H like Holocaust, S is survivor, K like Klezmer, the word band, B A N D, at yahoo.com. That's H S K band at yahoo.com. And uh, please send me your name and your address, and I'll be able to get that out to you. I, I thought Amazon has one of your songs, the Holocaust Survivor Band song, Amazon. Uh, there, there is a song there, but I don't know whether you can purchase it. But I do, we do have a CD as well. And my father and I are actually uh, uh, in the recording studio because dad and I are actually gonna make a, a, a beautiful CD, dad and daughter, we're doing something really special. Lovely. It'll be something very beautiful. That's I mean, and we're really sad that, you know, because of because of the current situation, obviously Saul and Ruby can't be together in the same wow. room tonight. But um, the fact that you're still making music is, is and making music collaboratively is beautiful to see. Um, there's another question here um, from Mark Silver. Uh, Saul, yeah. in your previous trips to Krakow, have you had you met other Polish families who hid in or helped Jews in the war? Or was this, we see you at the concert, you're meeting, you're meeting people who, who saved and hid Jews. Um, had you met that, had you met people who had saved Jews in your past trips to Poland? Well, I tell you something, what happened? We were invited to the palace to see the, uh, to see the president of Poland and the, and the, uh, uh, the minister of state came in and he spoke to us. Eventually, I asked him, where are you from? He says, I'm from Krakow. So I asked him, what's your name? So he told me his name. I went with his father to, to the public school. Wow. You remember this, Dad? Yeah, yeah. 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 So that's the one. Then Who I... would have ever thought that two Holocaust survivors would have been in the president's palace of Poland, two Holocaust survivors having tea and, and pastries in the presidential palace of Poland. Who would have ever thought that this would happen to these two wonderful gentlemen? It's, it's ama it was amazing, amazing opportunity. And how did you make those connections to the, to, uh, uh, to end up there? in Poland, he was born in, in London and he lives in Israel and now he lives in Poland. He spotted those samples like, uh, like that, I don't know if it's in the New York Times or, or to a concert. He, he came to my house, I invited Ruby with his accordion and we started to play with him, to, to for him. He was going so wild that he says, gentlemen, I have to do something to bring you to Poland. And when we came to Poland, he said about a beautiful concert for us, for us. His name is Jan Daniels, correct? Mm. Uh, Ruby Jan correct. Daniels, right? Correct. And he still works for the, he's, a, he's a man who's got a foundation and he takes care 
of the uh, righteous people that save Jews. He brought mm. four cars from London. He drives the uh, people drive them around those holoc uh, those uh, righteous. <laughs> And also, he discovers cemeteries, stones that people mm. build houses with the Jewish stones, and he tries to to recover everything he wow. he, he can. Wonderful fellow, I we met him several times. He's in the film. He's in the film, Maria. He's in the film too. Yeah. He's, he's, oh, he's the, the one, one in the film. He's the one that welcomes them in the in the courtyard, yeah, and he leads them like, in. I forgot all about. Right. Then he's in the scene, yeah. and he thanks uh, the the. Uh, Secretary of State for inviting That's them. Right. Yeah, and but there was another there was some experience us going to the to, to meet the, the to meet the, the the people in the palace in the Polish palaces because I tell you what to me was very interesting because two years before when I went my wife I was staying in a hotel in the same and the same plaza with the palaces. <laughs> wow! Wow! Yeah. Here's another question from Josephine Wagner. Um, dear Ruby and. Dear Saul, are there people that you met in your travels in Poland that you stayed in touch with? And then mm -hmm. she says, thank you for spending time with us tonight. Did you stay in touch with anybody that you met in Poland? Well, it, it sounds like, yes, it sounds, did you, that you met him here? Um, uh, did for you, us, did, were any of the people, yeah. For, for dad and I, um, uh, there was a one woman, Grace, which was Saul's uh, friend. Yeah. I know we we saw her once after that. And then, of course, Johnny Daniels, um, we'd seen him and spoke with him a few times. Uh, we did speak with uh, the band that we performed with. That band. We spoke we spoke with them twice. Mm -hmm. And uh, so a few people and through the, the time. The singer, what's what his yeah, name? Uh, Monio Stasiak. Oh, and then uh, Munyak. Oh, okay. Munyak. Munyak. Munyak, a singer. He, he was the Bono of Poland? or Yes. Yes, yes. Yeah. yes. okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Got it. <laughs> so how has the No, that was a couple of years ago, life? of course. Uh, that was a few yeah. years ago, of course. It kind of faded out. But you know what? Thank you for right. mentioning it. We're, we're, we're going to shoot out some emails. <laughs> Thank you. By the way, uh, by the way, Ruby <laughs> took his daughter to Poland and I took my daughter to Poland. <laughs> but Ruby's daughter was an entertainer. My daughter was a guest. <laughs> <laughs> we, see, we see the back of her head in the film, I think. <laughs> <laughs> she did not want to be filmed. She, 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 film she was like, don't film me, don't film me. <laughs> I tell you, Ariana and the audience, you know, I never in my life ever wanted to go to Poland. It was, it's been, a, for me, it was always associated with, with, with pain and fear and horror. And my father, of course, he always felt the same. He never really wanted to go back there. But because of the Holocaust survivor band, we went. And I remember my father one day telling me, he said, you know, um, I can't believe I'm going to go and yet take you with me. But Hitler didn't want me, let alone want you. <laughs> so it's good that we're both going to go and, and Hitler should kind of turn in his grave <laughs> that both of us are there now. <laughs> Not only a survivor, but an offspring. So okay. it, it was a wonderful Very time. I, I don't believe I'd ever return. I would only go there, and I even mentioned this to Saul, I would only go to Poland with Holocaust survivors. That's the only reason a, why I would She go. would never go to Poland. Uh, to, fin that I could to finish it up, it. I'm going to uh, tell you, where we were playing by the, war, by the gate when you come to Auschwitz, Arbeit man yeah. has day disease, and, and yeah, Ruby and the Corda, me and a couple of drones. This was a, a scene like this you're never going to see in your life. Yeah. And, and over there, and then in Birkenau, uh, where with uh, where the railroad, you know, where the railroad were playing in front of a, a railroad car that, you know, used to bring the Jews to, to slow that. You can imagine yeah. how, I, well, how we felt. But yes. Yeah. So it's we had extremely being powerful. in Poland, we enjoyed, we enjoyed the trip, we enjoyed the music, we had, we saw the sorrow, 
and we've thought about ourselves during the war. You know, as a combination of many, many things. But a few days, and with with uh, with Tad, with his uh, camera, was unbelievable. And the stage, and the people, and the interviews, and the, we were interview live in the in the TV uh, studio. I mean, we were all over. I don't know. We had such a wonderful time. So in a minute, we're going to have, we're going to, uh, we're going to hear some music. I want to ask one more question from the audience, um, which was about how long it took to make the film. And you said about two and a half hours, oh, two and a half years of shooting. But how many concerts did you have to perform at to fundraise for your trip in Poland? How many concerts? Uh, well, we performed and I Personally, I had three shows in Poland. I the had one Poland. concert with Ruby, with the orchestra. Then separate, <clears throat> I, I was filming with Dudu Fischer and Get Elbas in Warsaw. And no, no, oh. before, before so. Before oh. Poland, how many? Oh, before Poland? How many, yeah, concerts? Oh, but we had many. We had one in Detroit. We had many. And I also, wow. had, a, I also had a GoFundMe page. Yeah, I couldn't include no. all the concerts. I mean, there were yeah, so we many. Were, we I won couldn't Detroit, include. we won Hamilton, Canada. We won Pennsylvania. We won Austin, Texas. Uh, we won yeah, we went uh, to Miami. And we won many synagogues. I don't, I don't remember. I don't remember. Oh. So many. Unbelievable. And of yeah. course, in, in, in Las Vegas, uh, you know. In Cleveland. Yeah, in Brooklyn, in the King's Brooklyn. Theater, we, we, uh, oh, wow. with, with Get Elbas. Well, I don't yeah. so many. And your music videos, I mean, it's it's really an incredible it. journey um, captured in this in this film. Um, Todd, the film is going to play with the Boston Jewish Film Festival until November 15th. Um, but what happens to it after that? So the next step is, uh, well, it's still playing in some Jewish festivals. We just found out, actually, I didn't get to tell Saul and Ruby yet, uh, that Moscow is definitely... Oh. Oh my playing God. the film and it, it's such a mixed <laughs> bag for us because on the one hand we're excited about it but on the other hand uh, we would have been traveling there had this not been for COVID so it's killing us that you know we we could have gone to Moscow we could have gone to Krakow New Zealand. Uh, we could have gone to New Zealand we could have gone to Australia <laughs> I mean it's it's it is what it is it's very painful yeah. and and I feel so bad for for Saul, Ruby, and Hannah, who, you know, put so much of their life into this. And that would have been one of the rewards would be to travel the world and encounter people, including your, your festival and meet people, you know, person to person. And it's hard. This is really hard, but um, we're, we're doing the best we can as you are. And uh, November 24th, uh, it's going to video on demand. So uh, the distributor is Samuel Goldwyn Films, and they are going to release it nationally and internationally on all of the digital platforms. So people um, that have seen this film, they want to recommend it to friends. November 24th, it'll be available on Amazon and Apple TV, and I, I think Hulu, um, maybe Netflix, I'm not sure, but there'll be a, a lot of platforms to find this on. So tell your friends who are not in Massachusetts and for your friends in Massachusetts, tell them to watch it the next, <laughs> over the next two weeks with us. Yes. Um, <laughs> and I, I, so now I think we're going to, we're going to hear some music. Uh, Ruby, you're going to, you're going to start with, with a few songs and then, and then Saul will play after you. Um, so Daddy, let's do it. Some music? Let's yeah. do it, Ruby. Uh, I go. Uh, I gonna tell you something. I gonna play a medley of international songs because I speak five languages, and I play this music too. So many languages. Then I, it will be a medley of international a little song, a little of everything. <laughs> you know. Well, thank you for this opportunity because. My dad hasn't left the house really since March. He's only left once. He, he broke a tooth and I had to take him to the dental office. Uh -huh. So having the opportunity to perform and play for people, it's wonderful. So good, dad, good. hold on, because I'm going to have to bring the laptop over to dad. 
Just let me know if everybody we're, can we're see him. We're excited to hear you play in all these languages. It's, I was noticing in the film, you move, you know, you and Saul speak Polish, you speak um, English, you speak Yiddish. So we're looking forward to this. Uh, Ariana, I, the screen is very small, so I can't see if you could see my dad at all. We can see know. him Hold if on. you move it a little bit, a little bit away from you. Oh, there we go. Okay, wait, hold on. Perfect. Ich 
Losing your sound saw. Sounds loud. I don't hear anything. Hear him, Hana? Saul, we can't no. hear you. I don't know if you can hear us. No. We can't. Um, okay. He looks like a rock star, so it's a shame. <laughs> you believe he's 90, 96? Yeah. 
Mazel Thank tov. you. <laughs> Thank you, Saul. I just got a, I just got a note here um, saying thank you for the performance from Judy Burton and Juliet Landsman said, Saul and Ruby are so full of life and positive. They are wonderful. Thank you. Bye so, bye, darling. All right, everybody. thank see you. <laughs> so I hope everyone will tell their friends to see the film if they haven't yet watched it. It's available now on bostonjfilm.org and will be available to your friends outside of Massachusetts starting November 24th. And we put the um, the email address to get a CD in the chat so um, you can hear more of Saul and Ruby's music. Um, thank you all for joining us and we look forward to seeing you um, over the next two weeks at the festival and Saul and Todd and Ruby and Hannah, thank you so much for you. being here for our opening night of our first virtual festival. Thank you. Bye bye, Ariana, thank bye bye you. everybody. Never Bye again. Thank you. God never, bless everybody. Stay well. Never again in the, we should have peace around the world. That oh, man. And love peace. always Amen. wins over hate. That's God bless. Right. Anyway, love you all. Anyway, to you, Tap. Shabbat Shalom. I will talk to you tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> it's not Bye. Shabbat Bye. yet, Bye. but Bye. thank you. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Thank God you. bless you all. Okay. It was Bye. a pleasure to see you play with you, and we're going to continue. So long as my life, I'm going to make sure that I'm going to be, beat the antecedent, antecedent, uh, anti-Semitism. <laughs> healthy, healthy. And that's my life. That's my That'll life. be a long time, I'm sure. Yeah. <laughs> that's my life. Thanks, Ariana. Hi, everybody. Thank you, Boston. Hey, Pleasure to be here with you all. Tell me, when, tell me when to cut off Bye. because I want to go to sleep. <laughs> good, night. Right, good night. Good night. <laughs> We're going to go jam some more songs. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Yeah. Bye.